Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tony's Time and the Weekly Golf Show. Myself along with, uh, let me see if I get the pointer right, to Doug Upstone. He's on that side of the screen. Doug, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing excellent. Uh, hey, the uh, I know you played a little golf yesterday. Warm enough for you? Not too bad? Yeah, it's, it's smooth 111 degrees out here in Las Vegas, a painted desert. So nonetheless, uh, you know, hanging in there. Uh, it's a good way to lose some LBs. Just go out and play golf, and you can drink four or five cans of, of bottles of Gatorade and never have to take a piss. So you you right. know you're you know you're dehydrated out here in Las Vegas playing golf, and uh, like the early tee times, but with baseball, NBA, golf, you know WNBA now, uh, and the you know everything starting up here. Um, you got to get the picks in and get your work done. So by the time you go tee off, it's already 95, and then it just escalates from there. But it's a good excuse if you play crappy. So that's kind of how I roll with it. But there you uh, go. Another, yeah, yeah, you always got to have an excuse, you know. In you golf, know, you yeah. do. <laughs> I, I did. Nice smooth 74 yesterday. I'll take it. Um, that's yep. not going to cut it this weekend in the WDC FedEx St. Jude Invitational. Uh, this is going to be a star. It is a star-studded field, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is a World Golf Championship event. Um, it's The cream is going to rise to the top, and we'd be remiss in our duties if we didn't mention on the PGA Tour. It is a double dip week as the Barracuda Championships are going on in Tahoe Mountain Club, the old Greenwood there in Truckee, California. Um, this is the guys that are down the list on the FedEx Cup standings that get an opportunity to win a PGA Tour event, not the kind of money that you usually get. It pays about half of what uh, a regular tour event uh, win gets you, but it also does get you the full-fledged exemptions and everything. So mm -hmm. an important tournament there. We'll touch on that as well, Doug. But as I pull up the odds here, Doug, the usual suspects are on top of the list in terms of uh, – Odds to win it: John Rahm, uh, ten to one; Justin Thomas, Roy McIlroy, Bryson DeChambeau, Patrick Cantlay, Webb Simpson, Alexander Schauffele, Colin Morikawa, Daniel Berger. A little bit of a surprise there in the top ten: Hideki Matsuyama, Terrell Hatton, Victor Hovland. And what's interesting to me, Doug, is two guys that have had a lot of success here at this tournament: um, Brooks Kepeka and Dustin Johnson, both in bad form, sitting at thirty-three to one you know, uh, in this tournament here. And Tony Fanot, who, uh, you know, I faded huge in the final round again last week for a big, for a top pick. Uh, nonetheless, um, at 35 to one, probably playing as good a golf and as much a golf as anybody. Uh, this is an interesting field, some great matchups, Doug. Uh, your thoughts on this tournament, TPC Southwind down in Memphis. Yeah, it, it's uh, the uh, it's it, it's set up to be a fantastic tournament, and of course, it's also the precursor to next week, which we have our finally our first major of 2020, which is going to be the PGA Championship. So, I mean, like I said, the 45 of the top 50 golfers uh, are are here. So, I mean, like I said, it, it's a stacked field. Uh, there's talent everywhere. Um, the the odds are a little lower because the talent is so good. So, in terms of you know. It's not about, some of it is finding value. I'm not going to say it's not, but also it's more importantly, I think this week, it's just finding winners. And that's what we're looking to do. And I know like yourself, I had a winning week last week. So looking to duplicate that and to continue to move on. And, you know, with, uh, I know this is what, I'm not saying you're going to make the, one of this one of your plays, but, uh, you know, with, with Tony Finau, I like him as actually a top 20 pick and also some daily head-to-heads before Sunday. Yeah, that's one thing we talked about last week, and and uh, it came to fruition for me. I went ahead and went against him, um, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, we had uh, we had a push on going against him uh, on Sunday, uh, and uh, I believe I had Grillo. Um, no, I had uh, um, Swartzel at plus 160 against him on Sunday, and they tied. Swartzel lipped out a putt on 18 on the final hole for about 35 feet. That If it would have went in, we'd had a big payday, but we had another four-star matchup uh, that day that uh, cashed for us with ease. So 
another good tournament, 17, six and four run. And one thing about if you're doing head to heads, uh, you'll find from time to time, you'll have pushes. Um, both guys will fire 68, 69, 70, 72, whatever. Um, so that's a more common occurrence than it is in most any other sport when it comes to these pushes. It's not hard to get two guys shooting four under on on Saturday, you know, and uh, usually we're not stretched out on the money line. But a nice 17-6-4 and four run headed into this week and uh, cashing our top pick, a, a big uh, seven-unit pick last week. So we're excited about this tournament here. Doug, par 70, not 72. Uh, this is a 7,240-yard uh, course, not overly long, but not overly short. Only two par fives for the Bombers to take advantage of this week, and you've got eight. You've got eight par fours here that are 450 yards or greater, and uh, you've got greens here that are smallish by about a thousand square feet. The average green on the PGA Tour is around 6,500 square feet. These are averaging around 5,500 square feet. And uh, Bermuda Greens, uh, uh, Bermuda Rough, and uh, Zoysia. There's like three other tournaments on tour that have Zoysia grass. And Doug Zoysia, um, there's one course in Kansas City. I lived in Kansas City 12 years and uh, that uh, I played a lot. And it takes a little bit getting used to. Uh, it was a Tom Watson course that he had built there in Kansas City. And um, a little different animal to attack when it comes to iron play. And uh, iron play is going to be, uh, uh, iron play is going to be, greens of regulation here is going to be something you're really going to have to look at. No question about it, Tony. And then, you know, you mentioned those long par fours. The other aspect, if I remember correctly, six of the, of the eight that you mentioned are also dog legs. And so not only, so you, you have to get off the tee and you have to get off the tee accurately to position yourself, even if you're bombing it at 300 yards to, you know, to set up your next shot. So that's, so that's important. And then, like I said, the small greens um, and hitting, hitting off, you know, a little bit different type of grass like that is, is definitely different. Now, many of these guys have played there before, so they're very familiar with it, but yeah, off the tee accuracy and greens and regulation is huge. And the other reason that it is so important is this golf course, set, it went, since they've been tracking in 2003, the number of balls that are hit into the water, this golf course has 40%, excuse me, 30% more golf balls hit in it than any other on the PGA Tour. Sawgrass is second. I mean, 30% more getting wet. I mean, Matt Holt would love, your buddy Matt Holt would love to go out there with a fishing pole because, I mean, <laughs> there's so much water, he'd love it out there. But, you know, so the uh, you got to stay dry, and that's not easy to do. Um, I can't, I believe I read the last, uh, I think it was 15 winners or maybe it was 12 winners have had at least gotten wet once with, when they played there. So it's, it's, it's tough. And so it really, it really comes into play. So there's birdie opportunities, but there's also doubles waiting for almost anyone. I'm surprised that this course exceeds the bear trap uh, in water holes. You know, uh, they've got eight uh, water on eight holes here. Uh, this is going to be a very difficult track um, for players in terms of accuracy. I think that you need to look at but the things that I've handicapped, and I'm doing head-to-heads daily, the things that I really are going to handicap hard on this is greens and regulation, driving accuracy, and scrambling around the greens. Because you're going to have to scramble around the greens with these smallish greens. And those players that can scramble and hit it straight, especially off the box, as you mentioned, the water. Um, I have a projected uh, score here probably around anywhere from 13 to 15 under probably going to win this tournament. Um, rapid fire questions for you real quick. And I know you're unprepared, which I always like to have you back on your heels, Doug. Um, your thoughts of uh, Brooks Kopeka has had tremendous success at this golf course, especially over the last three years. Matter of fact, I think he's a defending champion. Yes. Um, that being said, at 33 to one um, in his recent form, I mean, his brother outperformed him, Chase Kopeka last week. Um, up in uh, up in Minneapolis at, at that the 3M tournament, 
Matter of fact, Chase fired a 63 on Sunday for crying out loud. Um, <laughs> while Brooks is sitting at home with his, you know, wherever he's at, with his thumb up his ass. But nonetheless, um, your your thoughts on him making noise here, number one, uh, maybe a top 20 finish, number two, or do you continue to fade him as we've, talked about fading other golfers in certain scenarios. Right now, I don't find a scenario where I'm comfortable putting money on him even in a head-to-head. Exactly, you know, that that knee he had, and, and he's he's admitted this now, that knee surgery he had, it's just, it just kind of depends on the day. He said, someday it feels okay, some days it doesn't. And so that's, that's where his problem is. It's obviously affected, you know, his entire game, not just, you know, not just off the tee, not just irons. So he's just he's just not the same player right now. Does that mean that he can't he can't turn it around? Uh, no, it doesn't mean that. And and as is the case, the last two weeks, I have I, I'll throw this out. Uh, uh, I said uh, John Rahm wasn't a good choice, and so he wins. And I said Sam Homa last week was a terrible choice, and he finished in the top five. So if I <laughs> if I'm taking if I'm going against Coca this week, well, you know what? There might be some money to be made there. But uh, in all seriousness. I, I I can't even imagine taking him. Just like I can't trust. Uh, you had mentioned Dustin Johnson. I can't trust his back. Do we know he's going to hold up for four rounds? Okay, in the heat, the humidity, and everything that's going to be there. I either one of them to me is a very difficult choice, even with low odds. Yeah, you've got yourself um, a heat and humidity factor here that's going to take its toll on the weekend. No matter how good a shape these guys are in. You know, um, I would think uh, guys like Phil Mickelson, who's a hundred to one uh, to even compete in this tournament for to win it. Um, the older, uh, over forty crowd. I hate to say that because that's younger than me. But at the end of the day, um, I think it's going to take its toll towards the weekend with some of these uh, players. And if you have some of these forty plus year old players in this field on Saturday and Sunday, especially on Sunday. And there, you get a favorable head-to-head matchup against a twenty-something. Um, it might be worth a look if the number's right, especially if you can catch maybe a, a lower-named, lower-tiered player. You know, catching a big number against one of these older players. But this week here, um, I'm going to go ahead and get into it um, with uh, um, some top tens uh, and uh, top twenties and a tournament matchup. And I'll go first this week, and you can comment on them. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau is back in the field. Um, he can bomb it. He has, if he's putting well, he's a threat to anybody. But I think John Rahm is one of the top three golfers in the world right now. And you've got a tournament matchup with John Rahm over Bryson DeChambeau at minus 135 right now. I think that's a decent number. And I'm going to stick with a hot hand and Rom, who's had a week off, and he'll be ready for this tournament. Trust me, his game is built for this course, uh, without question. Um, and then um, I'm going to go with top tens. I'm going to go with John Rom plus one ten, and my long shot of the week, Henrik Stinson, very good iron player. He tees off with a three wood, not a driver, and he can hit the thing damn near three hundred. Um, which will keep him in the fairways. His iron game is always one of the top iron games in golf. Um, put on one of the best displays of iron play I've ever seen in my life, the final round of the British Open the year he won it in that duel with Phil Mickelson. Um, this guy is extremely talented, and Stinson, um, much like DeChambeau, uh, if he's putting well, he's a threat to anybody that he plays. And I think he's going to, I just got a feeling, he's a little bit of a buzzword on the fantasy golf picking uh, websites and what have you. And then top 20 pick, I've got Ian Poulter, plus 250. This course is built for his game. He's played well this year. Not exceptional, but he's played well. But he's always hanging around, it seems, on the leaderboard, the top couple of pages in these tournaments that he's in, Doug. So those would be my picks for the uh, WGC FedEx St. Jude Invitational this week. Yeah, the uh, I, I like Rom. I, I mean, I, I think that's 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 solid. I mean, you know, he just was elevated to the number one player in the world. So yes, I mean, and 
even including the tough golf course. Well, let's put it this way. The last five rounds he played at the Memorial, he shot 17 under. Okay. So yeah. that, that kind of speaks up for itself, you know, in, yeah. in, terms of, in terms of where his golf game's at. He figured out his driver in terms of distance. He, like DeChambeau, put on a few extra muscle, pounds of muscle uh, during the break. And so he, he, was just, he struggled a little bit trying to find it. DeChambeau, the, the thing I wonder about him is the, you know, he can certainly overpower the course in, in certain areas, but if, if he gets wide, you know, where the water is or, or even hits it deeper into the rough, with, you know, especially in some of these dog legs, you know, he's going to have some work to do, you know, from that second shot. And I just don't know that, again, over four rounds, if that's going to hold up. Like I say, if he's, on his, if he's got his A game, that's fine. I just don't know that that's going to be the case. Uh, Poulter, I agree with you on that one. Uh, not so much, to be honest with you, Tony, on uh, Stenstrom. Um, or, uh, yeah, Henrik. The, I, you know, I, he he's he, talented, yes, but he hasn't played much lately, and that to me, that's that's my biggest bigger concern. I know he want. He, I'm sure he's been practicing like you know a, a great deal, but you know, and and I think this is really a warm up for him for next week for the PGA. Uh, I'm not I'm not as high on him as you are. I guess maybe that's the best way to put it. Okay, so you don't like my that's my long shot plus seven hundred. Right, right. I yeah. I mean, everything else sounds good. Well, here, I, I put, now, let me throw, let me 50, get a couple right you. Yeah, I put mm -hmm. it. I just let you know. Saying that plus seven hundred to me was worth a fifty dollar uh, fifty dollar bet there. So you know. Oh yeah. No, no. I uh, totally you, like, you jerk, but uh, my long shots have been fairly decent this year, so. I'm going to pull another one out of my ass and see what happens. And if and if and if he finishes uh, if he finishes uh, ninth, I'm going to be bragging about it next week. I'm just going to tell you that right now. <laughs> Go there ahead, give, give, give that's, me your that's best That's what every bet. golfer does, right? No matter what, yeah, betting are. betting or otherwise, that's what golfers yeah. do. It's part of the deal. All right, so I, I got one here for you. Um, now, I this was actually on my list. Uh, it was on my list this morning. Of, of plays and it was uh head to head now this, i again i do tournament not not daily and so i had ryan palmer over michael thompson now for you yeah. that, that don't know or weren't paying attention michael thompson was the surprise winner last week at the 3m open uh which he he did not have an invitation to this tournament until he won last week so that was a big deal for him uh, going forward though to me there's nothing to suggest that thompson will come anywhere close to duplicating that feat. And the reason yeah. I say that is that he has played 16 tournaments this year, uh, excuse me, 15 tournaments. He's missed eight cuts. He made yeah. the cut and then he won the tournament last week. I can't see that happening at all. Now I'm Ryan, uh, Ryan Palmer has not been great. Okay. Uh, and, but he was 135 uh, going uh, on Tuesday when I looked at the lines today, Wednesday, this uh, in the morning, that had jumped to 160 on Ryan Palmer. I can't do 160, okay, on that. So that's why I have lowered him to a free play over Michael Thompson in that one. Yeah, and bear in mind, Palmer was, I uh, believe, runner up the Memorial. He played with John yes. Rahm in the final yeah. round and uh, didn't play bad. Um, and him and Rahm are good buddies. They won the Zurich Classic together in the team competition down in uh, – Ryan's first win in quite some time when they play doubles down there in New Orleans. And uh, so a comfortable uh, setting for Ryan to play in with, with a good friend of his and uh, just couldn't get it done. And, of course, Ron was just on fire that day. Uh, nobody was going to beat him. But uh, a good showing, nonetheless, on a very difficult golf course. Um, I thought his game was good around the greens. Um, he doesn't get shaken easily. Um, and you've got, as you mentioned, Thompson coming in here, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and and an unexpected last-minute entry changed all his plans, and now he's in the PGA Championship, which he wasn't going to be in, and he has that to look forward to next week. So um, I wonder what his focus is going to be coming in here, you know, uh, and that's probably a good pick. Any any uh, top five, top ten, top twenties here? Yes, I do. I do actually. I'm, I'm going to throw one name out there for potential for both ten and twenty, uh, and it's it's a mid price uh, on Matthew Wolf, the 21 year old. 
Uh, he's plus 550 on a top 10 and 240 on a top 20. You know, he finished 12th last week in Minnesota. Uh, he was 22nd at the Memorial and at the Rocket Mortgage, he was second. Like I said, 21 years old, hits it a ton, um, but he's a little more accurate, than, generally speaking, than DeChambeau. And so in terms of either one of those two bets, I think there's some value there, uh, particularly the top 20. And I think he's, and, but I do think he's got a shot at the top 10 also. Yeah, at plus 240, top 20. I, I um, matter of fact, I'm going to bet that. Um, and I looked at him, I'm looking at him and some head to heads tomorrow that are out already. And to give you an indication of, of the value at plus 240 with a, with a top 20, I'm having a tough time finding him less than minus 150 in any head to head tomorrow. You know, which tells you the odds makers think that he's and that's against some really good players. And he he's had a solid game all year. Uh, he finished second in Detroit. You know, at the Rocket Mortgage Classic, he shot. He went low last Sunday um, and finished top ten. I forgot what place it was. It wasn't a top five, but he finished about thir- fourteen or fifteen under. What thir- four, I can't remember off the top of my head, but he was he was in the conversation mid round about making a run and. And uh, he doesn't get shaken. He's got a good all-around game, a quirky setup. The way he swings sets up his swing. But uh, just like Lee Trevino and Chi-Chi Rodriguez, it doesn't matter what the swing looks like. Even Arnold Palmer, to a certain degree, with a helicopter finish. I mean, hey, if it works for you and you're getting it the fairway and you're, you know, you're shooting three to four, I think he's he's one of the top 20 player, 25 players on tour in birdies per round. I mean, you got to take a look at him, and at plus two forty for a top twenty, a lot of value there, um, folks. Uh, also, just to mention quickly, the Barracuda um, Championship is a lesser of the two tournaments this week. It's in California at, um, at the Tahoe Mountain Club, and I will have a few head-to-heads out of that mixed in with uh, the WGC tournament here in Memphis as well. Um, and I've got my eye on a couple of really good matchups for Thursday for the opening round there for premium place. So take advantage of that free 60 bucks. Let me point the right direction. Right here, right here, Doc Sports, and then right above me, you got the free 60 bucks. Take advantage of that if you've never been a member. And uh, get on board with some of these golf picks. We're both uh, turned out a nice profit last week. I think I'm plus $3,000 for a $100 player the last eight cards. So we've had some big, big hitters in there that have came in for us. And if we didn't win a big hitter, it pushed. So we didn't get down a bunch of dollars because of a top pick loss. We had a couple of pushes. But nonetheless, this Barracuda, one thing I looked at, a, a top 10 finish for me, two top 10 finishes for me in this one. And Brendan Steele is one of them. Um, I got him a couple of weeks ago at plus 600 and he came in right at right at where he needed to come in and i think uh, he's at plus 275 doug and emilio grillo as well plus two 330 here for a top 10. i think these guys will both make the cut and i think they will contend let's see what they do on moving day on saturday but those are a couple nice little uh you know decent price values that have that have uh you know been on the leaderboard here and there um, during the season, and I think in this championship with a limited field, um, they're gonna they're gonna contend here for a top ten. So Brendan Steele and Grillo at plus three thirty, Steele's at plus two seventy five. Doug, anything for the Barracuda? Yes, uh, I actually like uh, Patrick Rogers. Actually, one of my plays last week was Patrick Patrick Rogers for the top twenty, and he was sitting, uh, I believe. 14th after through Saturday, and then he had a 72 on Sunday. So he fell, I think, the yeah. 32nd. So so that wasn't good. Yeah. But his first three rounds were sharp. He was in contention. This is not a difficult golf course. He's at 225 for the for a top 10 finish. I think he turns it around uh, against again a you know a even weaker field and makes himself a contender and cashes cashes for me. Yeah, he's been in the conversation uh, uh, a lot this week on the fantasy sites. Uh, for, uh, you know, a top 10, top five. A lot of people got him picked, you know, he's one of the more expensive players on the board if you're doing the fantasy side of things. 
Um, but at the end of the day, folks, that wraps it up for this week. We've got NBA starting Thursday. Major League Baseball underway. Some surprises. A little difficult handicap. A little different animal than usual. Uh, WNBA kick tips off for me tonight. I've kind of done a wait back and see approach. And, of course, the NHL this weekend. We got not one but two golf tournaments. Uh, we've got soccer going on. we still got KBO. Um, we've got a ton of stuff right over there at DocSports.com. 95% of the stuff is free. So go over and digest some of that free stuff. Doug's daily free videos. My daily free videos. Uh, Scott Spritzer and Robert Frigo putting out some great shows on the NBA and NFL. If you haven't seen them, go out and watch them. Uh, get to the YouTube page and watch them and uh, get yourself informed and get yourself a fat wallet. He's Doug Upstone. I'm Tony George. Thanks for tuning in.